What's going on my fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in this video we are going to be continuing our 2D mini golf series and adding UI and a level manager to our game. The level manager in this game is actually in charge of counting our strokes, the max amount of strokes for this current uh, hole and um, hand handling the UI of the level. So the first thing we're going to do for our game is create a UI canvas that we will and the first First thing we're going to want is a UI image, which we are just going to call uh, stroke UI. Now, this is going to be what we use to count our strokes. So we're going to set this in the top right position of the screen. We're also going to set it to about minus uh, 32, no, 24. Uh, and position of minus 24. We also want to go back to our canvas and actually change its UI scale mode to scale with screen and set its reference to 1920 by 10. 80. I always want to set this to 0 0.5 so it scales with both the width and the height of the screen. Now in our stroke UI we can mess around with this. Let's actually make it black um, and let's make it slightly transparent. Let's make it about 200 wide and that should be good for our stroke. Now let's actually import um, Text Mesh Pro by clicking in UI and selecting text. It's going to ask, do we want to import Text Mesh Pro? We do, so just click import TMP Essentials and that will install it for us. And then that's installed. You'll see we have text here. Now this is going to be our stroke text. And we'll set this to uh, scale with the current container and we'll make everything centered here. We'll make it zero out of zero for now because this will be zero strokes out of the maximum strokes, for example, three. Um, so let's just make this a bit bigger. We'll make it bold. Um, we'll auto size it and we'll make it a maximum of 64 and a min of 18. That should work. Now we've got the stroke UI inside of our canvas, we can actually create the win state and the lose state. So inside of canvas, let's create a new empty and call this the level complete UI. We're going to set this to scale with the screen. And then inside of this, we're going to create another UI image. We're just going to call the background um, and we can set this to whatever we want. Let's set this to something like uh, 768 by 768 that should be quite big to see let's also go back to our level complete ui and add in a image on this as well but what i want to do is make this black and set this something like 128 so you have this kind of faded out background as well now inside of this background what we want to do is have a title so we'll get a text mesh pro and the title will uh we'll just say title and we'll make this say level complete now we want to make this bold capital and we also want to make this text black we're going to set it to the top of the screen and we want to make this actually stretch the screen to be fair we can then set the height to like 128 we can make this center and center in the middle there and then we can make this a lot bigger say something like 64 should be good let's also bring it down let's say minus 24 from the top maybe 32 there we go that looks a lot better we can then create a, another piece of text let's just uh right click ui and create another text mesh pro and call this uh shots taken ui and we can keep this at the center for now make sure this is black and we'll set this to stretch in the center here We'll then make the text centered as well, just like we did the last one, 128. If we actually go back to the scene view here and just click F, you'll see it actually shows us the outline of it as well, making it easier to understand where you're placing your um, text. And in here we can say you potted in zero strokes. So you can see here, this is just placeholder text. This is what it's going to say, you potted in and it'll tell you how many sh strokes it took you to pot the ball. Finally, we want to create a new UI button, which we're just going to be called next level button. And the next level button, we're going to set it to be at the bottom of the screen, be about 500 pixels wide and 100 high. We'll make the background black and we'll also go in here and make the text white. We can then go into the text here, change the text to say something like next level. 
and we can set this to take up the whole size that and probably make the button auto size with a maximum of something like 48 um to 80 uh, to 18 there we also want to move this from the bowl probably 128 or positive 128 to bring that up i then want to duplicate this button and call this main menu button and i'm just going to change the y to be something like 24 from the bottom or maybe 32 like we have for the top and then that way we can move this up another 32 so, so bringing that up I don't want to make the main menu button a bit smaller, so we're going to set this saying like 50 and 250. Maybe that's a bit small, let's say 475. We can then make the text a lot smaller, say something like 32, just so it fits in, and change this to say back to menu. We can actually bring this back down. I could probably say minus 32 again, and there you go, that's looking all right. And overall, I think this is a bit big, so let's make this something like 500 or maybe 600 there. We can also take these shots taken and actually bring this up a little. So let's say minus 32, or sorry, even 64 there. And there you go, that goes up pretty nice. That looks good there. So if we come here, you can see why it looks like there. So what I want to do is select the UI complete and just disable this, but duplicate it and rename this to... Um, uh, game over UI then we can enable the game over UI take the title and change this to game over we can take the shots taken and just delete it and then our next level button we can change this to say try again and the main menu one could also just stay the same you could also probably shrink this as well to be something like 500 uh, just so there's not as much space there as well and once again, we just want to disable this to make it easier there. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually create our level manager. Reset, transform, bring it to the top of the page, and then give this a level manager script. Now we've got this level manager script. Let's just double click this to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And we want to turn this into a singleton. But before we do that, we're going to be using TM Pro at the top here. So make sure you have this imported because we're going to be referencing some text mesh pro uh, GUI. Now back in here, we just want to set a public static level manager and call this our main. We then just want to say a header with references in. And in here, I want to serialize a private text mesh pro U GUI. And we just want to call this the stroke UI. We can then give this some space, let's say 10. Uh, this will just give space in the actual um, U editor. And then we want to set a private game object called the level or level complete ui and serialize this field and give it the private text oh, text mesh pro U gui and set this to level completed stroke ui so this is just for the actual stroke text the how many you've potted how quick it took you to pop and then we'll set this to another space of 10 and we'll set this to a serialized private game object called level or level failed or even game over ui will work as well now under here we can actually set a uh, header and we want to call this attributes so this will be the levels attributes um and we can set a private int called max stroke max strokes then once we've got that we just want a private field called inch strokes which is going to be the strokes we take we then want two uh, public variables but we're going to hide them in the inspector which we're going to say public ball out of strokes and hide in inspector public boolean called level completed now since we're making this a static reference so we can access it in other scripts without having a reference to it we want to actually go in our awake method and just set the main equal to this 
this will just set this instance to the main static um, level manager. Then we want a start method, which we're just going to call something like update stroke UI. So when we, we come in, we're just going to have a function to handle updating the stroke. So we'll just set a private void called update stroke UI. And then inside of here, we can, all we have to do is say stroke UI dot text is equal to stroke, stroke, sorry, plus, and then we want to slash and then plus our max strokes. Then to add to this so we can actually update our strokes, we want a public function now, a public void called increase stroke um, and increase stroke and we want to say strokes plus plus we can then say update we can then reuse the function called update if i can actually spell update stroke ui to then update our strokes and we can say if stroke is great or strokes is greater than or equal to max strokes then out of stroke should be equal to true now to finish off our level manager, we just need two functions to be able to trigger our level complete UI and set the actual strokes you completed in and also our game over UI. So we just need two public functions we can call from our board script in here called public void and we want a level complete. And in here, all we wanna say is say level completed is equal to true. And then level completed stroke UI dot text is equal to, and then we want to do something here. We actually want to check if, we actually want to do something a little funny. We want to say if our strokes is greater than one, then we're just going to say you putted in, and then we'll pass in stroke, and we'll say strokes. So we're saying here, if it's greater than one, so if you scored in more than one stroke, let's say it took you three strokes, you put it in three strokes, then we just want to say else, we're just going to pass in here, you got a hole in one. So what we're doing here is we're just checking if we did it in one shot, we're then going to say you got a hole in one. Otherwise, we're just going to tell them how many strokes it took to put the ball. We're not going to bother with birdie, par or anything like that. This should be good enough. Then we just want to say level complete UI dot set active is equal to true. Now we can do a similar thing here. Go public void game over. And in the game over function, we can literally just say uh, game over UI dot set active and set that to true. That way we'll know that it's game over and we need to try again. So now back in Unity, once the scripts compile, in our level manager, we want to get our stroke UI text. So drag that into there. We don't want to get our level complete UI, but we also want our... Uh, shots taken UI as well and then we finally just want our game over UI as well just all in here we then want to set the max strokes for the current level and we're going to set this to something like three so this first hole you have to complete within three strokes otherwise you fail but before that works what we need to do is go back into our ball script and scroll all the way to our drag release function. And after the distance, we want to just say, we want to say level manager dot main. So we're getting our actual main here and just say increase stroke. This is going to increase our stroke so we know it's going up every time we released a shot and it's, and it's actually correct distance. We then want to scroll down to our check win state and where we've got this level complete, uh, we can say level manager dot main dot level completed. Oh. Level complete, sorry. Then finally, if we scroll up to our update method, under here, we can actually do a thing to check if we lose. So we just want to say if our level manager dot main dot out of strokes, and our rb.velocity.magnitude is less than or equal to 0.1f. Actually, we'll make it to 0.1 is a bit slow and you don't want to be sat there waiting for it to slow down. And our level manager dot main dot level complete completed is not equal to true. 
So if you complete it and all of this, you've run out of strokes as well, it means this won't be called. But what we'll say is level manager dot main dot game over and that will finish our game so now if we go back to our screen here we should be able to hit play let's just check everything selected on our uh level manager and our ball hit play and we should be able to see our strokes update in the top so if we take a shot you can see it goes to one out of three and once we get slow enough we can then take another shot to let's say down the corner and then finally, we're going to miss our last shot and we should have three out of three strokes. So once this becomes slow enough and it doesn't score a goal, it says game over. Now, we can't actually try again or back to menu yet, but we'll implement that in a second. Let's just see if we can get a win state now as well. So we're going to try and score with a hole in one to start with. Um, so let's just see. Boom. You got a hole in one next level now let's say it takes us two shots to score so here we go we're going to take a second shot now and boom you put in two strokes you can see that's all working now we just need to hook up the buttons now there's two ways we could do this we could set up a state manager to handle our state or we can just add it straight to our level manager i feel like we should create a state manager function to allow us to use this so what we're going to do is go in here and create a state manager script click create and add double click this to open it up in visual studio code and all we want to do is say using unity engine dot state oh, dot scene management and then we can just add two public voids called one called load level where we'll pass in a string called level name and in here we can just say scene manager dot load scene asynchronously because this will allow you to do other things while you wait and it won't freeze the game and then we can pass in the level name and pass load mode single now you don't actually have to pass this single it will do this by default um but i like to pass it just so we know why it is then we can actually create another function called public void reloads the current level and all we're going to do is say scene manager dot load scene asynchronously again. But this time we're going to say scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. So this will just get the current scene and get the build index for it. And it reloads the scene we're already on. So now if we go back to Unity and go to our next level button, we can actually add in the um, level manager select the state manager and click uh, load level and we could say something like level two let's just go to our scenes here and check what how we've named this so we're going to say level zero two now we don't have this level so it will throw an error but we'll create one in a moment by duplicating this just so you can see it working um, and then if we go to our game over we can go to our next level button and we actually want to rename this to our re or re or try again button and on here we just want to grab the same thing the level manager go to our state manager but this time we want to just reload the level because it means we're trying again now just to test this works what we want to do is duplicate level one rename it to level two let's double click this to open it up and let's just go into our tile map here and change a few things so let's change the wall or the wall walls uh delete go into our scene view so we can actually edit it uh grab our grid scroll in um yep yeah, and then just delete let's say these walls around here we'll just delete it all um delete the water and the grass the ground and we'll make this one slightly different so we'll bring this along here we'll make it a lot thinner than the last one we want to select walls for this and then we want to grab this in our walls and just place it in the way so you can see we can add that there add a dot here and a dot there so it makes it like a kind of obstacle in the way so you can't just shoot straight and then we just want to go to our water grab this one hit the square bracket and just place it at the bottom here and there you go that is level two of our game now if we go we go back to level one what we need to do to actually make sure this can load is by going to our build settings and making sure our level is in our build, uh, our scenes in build. This will allow the scene manager to know to load it. 
So let's give this a try by hitting play and seeing if now we can fail the game by let's say missing a couple of shots. And here you go. Now hopefully when this slows down it says game over we can hit try again and we get restarted. So now this time if we score a goal you got a hole in one wing click next level and you see we're now on the next level boom there you go and next level won't actually work it'll just reload level two because that's what we said it to do uh we haven't actually changed that yet nor do we have enough a level for it to actually change but you can see that this is now working i've also missing one of the um the shadow tiles here so now we lose this and we can hit try again and it'll reload level two now I'm not going to be doing the menu in this game because we'll be doing the menu, oh sorry, in this video because we're going to be doing the menu in a separate video that is going to be super fun and unique to try out. Um, I, I have a cool idea and I hope you guys are going to enjoy the menu um, level. But there you go, you can see we now got a game UI in here as well as the lose and win state for our games and the ability to go on to new levels. In the next one, we're actually going to set up a menu, which is actually going to be a fun quirky menu and to also add in the different levels you can select also guys before we end this video i just want to say i have a game called banana toss it's on the google play store go play it try it out have fun let me know what you think and yeah that's i just wanted to let you know that i have a game you should try it out if you have an android phone uh and it would be really appreciated thank you and let's continue with the video so guys don't forget to smash that like button hit that subscribe button and also leave a comment down below now if you want to join the community feel free to hop on the discord server the link is down below and we are a friendly bunch of people you can get involved with the community and just have a little fun make games for each other do what you want it's a fun free roam game dev coding community but guys that's going to be it for this video and i will see you in the next one peace out